Hello, I'm Eli Stacy, and today I'd like to show you how to create more complex and engaging replays in the VBox on one mode to better fit your production and sport. We'll start with the different ways of creating replays and clips, then how to play them out either individually or in a playlist, and finish with using the Shuttle Express as a hardware controller. Let's get started. There are two ways of creating replays within the VBox, either with clips or with cues. The difference being is that clips have a defined in and out point, they can be tagged with keyword metadata, and can be individually exported, while cues are just a reference point in time that don't have a fixed output. Let's start by making a clip. To make a clip, it's very simple. We just go to the bottom right, at any point we press mark in, wait for any action to occur, such as him trying to make that shot, let's mark out, and then we hit save, We'll see the clip number at the bottom right where the save button is, and we'll also see the clip properties window pop up. From here, we can add keywords. So in this case, there was uh, pushing and uh, there was a foul and was applied to all the camera angles. Uh, then we can see in their clips window in the asset management at the top left, I have every single camera angle of that clip, so not just my cameras, but also my outputs as well, if I have graphics on top of that. Well, let's make another clip. So one of the things uh, to note is when you're creating a clip, it's not based on the live multi-viewer, it's instead based on the replay multi-viewer. So that means while your live production is going, I can jog back with the jog pad here. Now I can do that just with one finger, scrolling back to fine tune exactly where I want that point to be, or, I can use two fingers and scrub back much faster. So that allows me to scrub through a large amount of data. Maybe I missed this free throw. Another option is to use this minus button here. Now this number is configurable, but I can go from here and just do minus three seconds, minus three seconds, and quickly jump back in time. So let's go and let's find a good angle for this shot. We can mark it in, then we can scrub to whatever we want to finish right around here mark out and save. Again, we have that window pop up. This time it's a free throw. I'm going to apply it. Then I can see that my clip was added here. If you ever want to go in and check what keywords are associated with any clip, or if you want to add any keywords, what you can do is go to select, select any of the clips that you want to edit, then press edit. And you can see this window pop up again, where we can uh, add different keywords, or we can manually type in a name for the clip and then we can apply it to just the angle that we selected or every angle within that clip. Now let's create a cue. If we go to the bottom right under mark, when I press mark, at that point in time, if I go to my cues bin, I can see that it creates a thumbnail there that I can jump back to. Now, again, that is actually referring to the point in time of my replay multi-viewer, if I press mark here, but Say I'm in the middle of creating a clip or, or creating a, a replay and something happens on the live multi-viewer, we also have a live cue button. That will then refer to our live multi-viewer instead of our replay multi-viewer. Another quick way to create a cue is actually to go to our replay multi-viewer, find the orange section under any video and tap on it and we can see that it creates a cue point. Now that we've created a few basic clips and cues, let's use those to make more complex replays for the program output. We'll start with clips. Let's find one of our clips, and if we tap on the green section, it'll send it to preview. So let's just do this clip of him making the free throw. Once it's on uh, the preview window, if we want to just play it out, we're happy with the clip, we can just tap on it, and it'll play it out on the program output. But uh, as we'll see, you know, maybe the clip ends right there, Maybe that's too short. So let's bring that clip back onto preview. Let's go back to a live camera on program. And then once it's here, we can actually edit some of the properties of it. So if we go to the bottom right, I have my uh, jog pad here and it's green, which means it's now controlling preview. I can switch between controlling preview and the replay multiviewer just by tapping on this window to switch between them. See, now I'm controlling replay multiviewer. Back to live there and go into preview. Then I can see where the out point is. And I can actually go past that. So it says out, it says plus one 
second or if I go past it goes out plus two seconds, uh, that's fine. I actually can now press out and change that output so that that's now the new uh, output of this clip. So if I were to play that again, it would now go to that out point instead of the other one. Now, another thing that I can do, because uh, I don't just want one angle of this replay, I want multi-camera replay. So if I go to the bottom here, I can see the button sync to preview. So first thing to do actually is to go to back to the beginning of the clip. One way to do this is go to the bottom right here and where it says go to, and it pops up this window, which typically we can jump between the different time codes, but actually while go to is there, I can press in and then it'll go to the beginning of my clip here. Perfect, so now let's go down to sync to preview. And what this will do is it'll sync my preview multi-viewer to the exact same time code as my preview window here. Then from this, I now have every angle of that replay. So if I were to now play this out, it's going to play it out. This is still at the beginning. So now I can do a different camera replay just by tapping on it to bring it to program. There's another angle. Let's tap on that again and we can get a third angle. So from this one clip, we have all the different angles that we can then export later. But really, uh, if we go to our multi-viewer, it's very easy for us to create multi-camera replays of this. And another thing is when going to the replay multi-viewer, because it's not referencing the clip directly, it's really just jumping the record train back to that point in time, there isn't going to be a hard output that'll mean that the video will stop at this point. Instead, the video will continue. So see, this is obviously past wherever that out point is, but we'll never have a frozen video on frame because we wait to the record train as opposed to the clip. And then whenever you're done, you can go live here, but that doesn't mean it's live on the program output. Instead, I have to tap on a live source to go back to it. Now let's create a replay using just cues. So as you can see here at the top, instead of having every camera angle for an action, we actually just have one button, which is blue, which means it'll send it to our replay multi-viewer, not our preview window. So if we tap on that, we can see that we immediately jump back in time to that cue point. Let's go back to live because there's actually a few ways that you can go to that cue point. The other way is if you tap on the blue section of the window, that'll recall the most recent cue. I tap on that and we jump right back to that point in time just as we did before. Then actually from here, we have additional control. So at the bottom right, we can see that we can jump between different queue points. I can do previous queue and I'll jump to the, the last one, to previous queue again, and I jump back even one more. But if I ever want to go to any specific one, I can also just tap at the top. Then from here, I'm going to do uh, something a little bit different than last time. First, let's queue up uh, you know, when the action is about to take place. And what I'm actually going to do is instead of having these frozen at the beginning of the action, I'm actually going to follow the action in slow motion. So let's see how to do that. So let's first start off with this wide angle. I'll just send that to program. Then while the video is playing, if I do C to program, my multi-viewer jumps to that point in time and plays out at the same speed. So now I can do a multi-camera cut in slow motion. So if we want to follow the action, this is a great way to do that. And then whenever you're done, tap on a live source to go back to live, and our replay multi-viewer will automatically jump back to being in sync with our live. Now, one of the things you might have noticed is while we're creating these replays, we actually have new windows popping up in our queues bin. That's because the system knows that, you know, if you're taking a, a clip or you're taking a certain angle to program, it's probably uh, pretty important. So it actually records all that information that you can refer back to later. So that replay that we just did, we actually go up here and we see this window with a plus on it. And when we press the plus button, we see that all of the windows expand out. And these are all of the different camera angles that we used during that replay. Now, when we're building a playlist, we'll be able to select them and send it over. But at any point, I can jump to these points in time as you see the replay modes of viewer jumping back there so that I can refer to them. Now, another thing to note uh, with these windows is how you, know, you can use each of these, you know, the program preview and the replay multi-viewer as totally independent time codes. So for instance, let's send this video to program. We'll notice that this is frozen and I have independent control from the program window. 
but also means I can send this clip to preview. And then if I switch to my preview control at the bottom right here, I have independent control here. So I really have a lot of options for queuing up a lot of different things. Now, where this is especially useful is say I scrub through here and I find maybe a really good reaction shot of uh, the crowd or, or, or the audience, they're cheering right after a goal. Um, I could bank that at the beginning so I can, you know, cut between all of the different different clips in or different angles in my replay. And then right as I'm done, I can finish with the reaction shot. And then after that, I'm safe to go back to a live camera angle. Now that we've created a few cues and clips, let's look at the different ways that we can add them to our playlist. The first thing to do is if we were to just have a marked cue point, no in or out points. If I were to select that by tapping on the orange section and doing add to playlist, we'll see that it's 10 seconds in length. Uh, that's because if we go to our preference bin and on page four, we see that clipping duration before manual cue point is five seconds and clipping duration after manual cue point is also five seconds, allowing us to have that 10 second clip with the mark point right in the middle. Then, if we were to go to a replay that we've previously done by tapping on any one with the plus on it, I can go through and select these three camera angles, and I can do Add to Playlist. So that's how we can add some cues, but now let's go into our clips. I can again do the same thing, tap on the orange section if I want, and do Add to Playlist, and it'll put it right to the end, and it'll also remember the order that I tap them in. But what if I don't want to add it just to the end of my playlist? What I can actually do is if I want to add it somewhere in the middle, I can tap on, say, 125D. I want to put a clip before that. Once it's here, I can just tap on any of my clips. Let's do two of them. Uh, and then what I do is do insert into playlist, and that'll put it before whatever that selected clip is going to be. Now, once I've added a few of them, I can tap on the green section of this playlist to send it to preview. I can scrub through it with the jog pad at the bottom right. I can go back to the top just by pressing the green button at the top left there. Or I can go down to the bottom left and play it out from this controller. And from here, I can adjust the speed um, from different presets or from the slider to like to play. Or if I just want to go back up to the top, Another option that I have is if I go in here and press select on one of the clips and then press edit, it opens up the playlist item properties window. And here we actually have a lot more control over what the playlist will look like. From here, I can choose what transition it's going to be. You know, for instance, I could go between one clip to the next, it'll be a cut or it can be a mix and you could decide how many frames that's going to be. And then I can change the playout speed of the clip as well. So you have a lot of different controls here. You can apply it to all the cameras, or you can go through and manually uh, change these settings for each one of them. So let's just hit apply. Perfect. So I'm going to go through my playlist and see. So this one, I don't really like the camera angle. Um, you know, perhaps the, the content of the clip is fine, uh, but I can change the camera angle just by putting it into preview. I press change angle, and now my replay multi-viewer will jump back to that point in time just to switch out to a different angle. So I can press this one. See, now this looks much more interesting than the one we had before. This one's also a 10 second clip, so that's quite a bit of time. What I can go through is I can either scrub uh, to the very beginning and say, you know what, maybe we just missed it. If I press extend, I can actually go past where that endpoint was and I can select a new endpoint. See, but now this, the clip's 16 seconds. So let's go through. All right, it looked like there was a, a foul right there that knocked it out. And then we'll mark the new output. And so now we have a five second clip, much more manageable. Then once we're ready to play it out, we can go back to the top and then simply just tap on the preview window and it'll send it to program. Once it's playing out, I see that the red bar is going down each of the clips that I've added. I also see the number clip that we're on. So in this case, I have a three out of eight. And I also get a countdown. So for this single clip, I'm it's just finishing. Uh, now this one has five seconds left. 
but my whole playlist has around 25 seconds left to the playlist. And I'll be able to use that to know when to switch back to a live camera. At any point, I can also skip a clip just by putting it into preview and then going to it and this playlist will automatically update and continue playing out for where it is. And then so I'm on my last clip. I see it has a few seconds left. I'm just going to tap on a live source to go back to live. Great. Now that we've created a simple playlist, what we can actually do is use these same assets to create more playlists. So one of the things that I can do is I can go through and select a few angles. I can copy it. It's so now it's in this clipboard here. Then if I were to go into this new one, I can select the elements that I have copied, and then I can add it to this playlist. Perfect. So now I have a playlist with just those items. And you can use those to shuffle things around within the playlist, or as I mentioned, uh, creating a new playlist from those elements. Another thing that you can do that's pretty cool is if I were to mark an in, mark an out, and instead of pressing save, I do insert. What I can do is I can actually select one of my camera angles to immediately add to my playlist without having to create a clip, then send it over. I can, in the middle of building a playlist, add another element to it very quickly. Let's do that again. In out, and this time I'm going to add, I select which camera angle, let's get a wide on that, let's do B, and perfect, so 127B was just added to my playlist. So now I have my playlist and I could just play it out. Go through, and then again the same thing, I have the countdown for the whole playlist and the clips and the number that I'm on. When I'm done, go back to live. Finally, let's use the Shuttle Express as our hardware controller for creating replays. To see what the default values for GD settings are, go to Setup, and in Preferences on page 5, we'll see what the outer buttons are set to. In this case, we have button 1 is set to Toggle Control, so that's toggling between either my Replay Multiview or my Preview window, uh, you know, what, what window I'm going to be controlling at that point. Then I have Mark In, Mark Out, and Save for creating clips with these uh, inner three buttons, and then my fifth button is setting whatever window I have control over back to live. And then I have two other bits of settings here. So I have the outer ring that has different uh, jog speeds. So the further I turn the outer ring, the faster it'll go through the video, faster it'll scrub through the uh, video. So this is good for going through a large amount of video if I need to go back very quickly. And then the inner ring is uh, more for fine tuning uh, where the in point is going to be in. Each tick only goes through one frame at a time. So let's hit apply, exit, and let's create a clip. So perfect, he just made a shot. I can control one window I'm, uh, I'm controlling by pressing the left button here. And as we can see at the bottom right of the preview window, I'm switching between now to replay. And so now let's jog back. Now it's a bit back in time, so I'm actually going to use the outer ring. And as you see, the more I turn it, the faster I go through the video. Let's go back, back, back. Let's go to that shot right around there. And so now let's use the inner ring to fine tune that in point. Perfect. Let's use this one right here. Mark in. I go through. Perfect. He makes a shot. Mark out. And then save. It opens up the clip properties window. And then I'm going to say that's a three point and then you hit apply. So great, now I have my clip, but I want to set my uh, replay multiviewer back to live. Perfect, I'm still controlling the replay multiviewer. I just press the fifth button to set it. Now let's go in and create some custom settings for the Shuttle Express, because you know maybe making clips is useful, but I really want to have more personalized control for my operating style. So I really like having toggle control. I like keeping it there. Um, but in this case, I'm going to be using cues instead of clips. So I'm going to set my three buttons to be previous cue, next cue, instead of save, or I'm going to do mark. So I'll be creating a bunch of cue points and then being able to quickly jump through them. And then I'm going to keep my fifth button as live as well. I have to hit apply and then exit. And so now uh, on, on my multi-viewer, let's wait for uh, any sort of action to take place. Looks like he's going to try to make a shot. Oh, he doesn't, but let's create a clip of that. So let's go back. And now at this point, I'm going to press the fourth button, which is mark. And we see it creates a new cue point. And if I want to go back to live, I press the fifth button. 
And so now at any point, if I want to go to that queue, I just press this button to go to my previous queue. If I want to go back again, maybe I want to cycle through all the different queues that I have available. I can just go through there. All right, go back one more. All right, but let's let's go to the one that we just created. So next queue, next queue. And I can't go back any further, so this is the most recent one. And then I just tap on any of my camera angles and I send that to live for my replay. Then whenever I'm done on my replay multi-viewer, I can set that to live. And for my program window, I tap on a live source to set that to live. I hope this has taught you a few new ways to create more complex and engaging replays for your production. If you'd like to learn more about the Auto and Air application or the VBOX platform, there's information on our website. Thank you.